Hello and welcome to QQ Evolution. In today's training video, we're going to take a look at the marketing capabilities of QQ Evolution. We'll take a look at the differences between our two template editors. We have an RTF editor and an HTML editor built into the system, and we'll take a look at the differences in how the two operate and function. We'll take a look at the process of creating a template letter with both the RTF editor and the HTML editor using merge fields. We'll show you how to edit those template letters, how to include images in your HTML templates, and how to mass market or mass mail by sending out bulk emails or bulk prints. Now the screen that we're currently viewing is your Evolution dashboard. This is going to be the first screen that you see when you log into the system. And in today's recording we're going to spend most of our time in the mail room and in the quick word area here on the left hand side. Quick word is where you're going to find your actual template editors. As I mentioned we have two different editor types, the RTF editor and the HTML editor. The RTF editor was our original editor, the HTML editor we added to the system at a later time. We do have the ability to convert old RTF letters into HTML letters within the HTML editor. I'll show you how both of these work in today's recording. And next we'll take a look at the mail room. This is where you're going to have access to send out those RTF or HTML letters, those templates. You can send them as either bulk emails or bulk prints within this section here in the mail room. Now before we show you how the bulk marketing options are going to work, let's take a look at how to build and edit the templates that we have available. We'll first start in the RTF editor. So here we are in the RTF editor. RTF stands for Rich Text Format. This is going to give you some really basic options here for creating a template. We have along the top in the toolbar the ability to create a new template, open an existing template, save the template that we're currently working on, or delete the template. We also have the advanced editor up top, which we'll get into in just a moment, and we can access the help option here as well. Here I have a couple basic options for how I want my text to appear, my font style, a few options for how we want our color of our font to appear, we can change the size of the font and make it bold, italics, and we have some accent marks here along the right hand side and some special characters. I can also highlight and copy my selection and paste as well and we can do a spell check. Let's take a look at our advanced editor options as well. The advanced editor is going to give us some additional choices on font style and font size as well as the ability to select underline and some additional colors for our font. We can also control the alignment as far as centering or aligning to the right or left. We can do bullet points and we can include hyperlinks. You may want to do most of your editing in the advanced editor here as it's going to give you more options as far as undoing any mistakes or redoing. You won't have that ability when you're in the basic RTF editor. So text that we type in here will be saved once we exit out. Now the red underline here is indicating that this word is misspelled, so that's the spell check flagging us. Along the right hand side you're going to find the access to the different merge fields that you have available. Merge fields are going to allow you to pull information from the management system and populate it into your template when it's generated, depending on the client or the policy that you are generating this letter for. So you have some options here. Right now we're viewing all of the merge fields, but I can also narrow it down to show me just the merge fields pulling information from the client screen, the policy screen, or the billing screen for the specific customer. And when we highlight a merge field here, you'll see a description of it listed down below in the bottom left, just to give you an idea of what information that's going to pull. You also have some additional categories for merge fields here on the right hand side for auto quotes, system merge fields, and general merge fields, as well as receipt information. 
Some important ones to point out here under the general option, you'll see preview and type info here. If you want to have the ability to edit this letter at the time that you are generating it before you send it to the selected customer, you'll want to have one of these merge fields included somewhere in your template. Preview is not going to show up anywhere, so if I double click this, I can include it anywhere in the letter. It's going to allow me to edit this whenever we go to generate it. The type info here will act as a placeholder, so I can add that information, that merge field. It's going to show up when I go to edit the template, just so I know where exactly I wanted to enter some additional information, if necessary. So let's build a quick template letter to our customer here. We can thank them for their recent purchase. Let's pull information from the client screen for the client's name. And we'll just double click on the merge field to add it to the template. We'll go to the policy screen merge fields to look for information such as line of business. And if we need to include the agency's name, maybe we have multiple agency locations. We can go to the client screen to pull the agent from the client screen. And we can look for the agency phone number. And if we need to pull the expiration date, we can look for that in the policy screen as well. Now again, if I want the ability to edit this letter, maybe I'm going to want to add my name depending on who's generating the letter, so that information might need to change. I'm going to put the type info here, or I could also include just preview. Again, preview I can put anywhere in the template. Type info here is going to act as a placeholder so I know exactly where I want to type the additional information. You could also use the agent from client screen if you know that's going to be the contact for this customer or that's who's going to be generating this letter. And now that we have a quick template typed up, we can go ahead and save this. We'll give it a name. We can select which agency is going to have access to this template and what language it's going to need to be saved in. And we can choose if we're going to save this as a letter, a fax cover letter, or an email cover letter. And we can now see the name of the template displayed along the top so we know which one we're working on in editing. I can click New to create a new template or open again to open an existing template. So if we wanted to edit an existing template, a different template perhaps, I can click Open and I can select from the list of all of my RTF templates. My HTML templates I will not have access to since I am not in the HTML editor. So I'm only going to see the RTF templates here. And we can pull up this holiday letter. And here's our holiday letter that we can make changes to and edit as we need. We can see the merge fields that have been selected. So when we go to generate this letter, it's going to pull in the first name of the customer that it's being generated to. It's going to pull in the name of the agency, the line of business from the specific policy that it's being associated to. And we can see we have a type info here section, so we'll be able to edit this letter and we'll see this as a placeholder for where we wanted to put our information. So let's go back to the dashboard and we'll take a look at the other editor option we have, our HTML editor. And again, we're going to Quick Word and this time we'll go into the HTML editor. So here we are in the HTML editor. You'll see there are a lot more features to this editor here. It's going to look much more like you're used to seeing in something like a Word document. You'll have the ability to edit things like text color, background color, bold, italics, underline. We can do superscripts and subscripts. You can control your alignment. We have the ability for numbering in a list, for bullets, for indenting, and we can convert old RTF letters into the new HTML format if necessary. If you need to know what any of these other additional buttons do, you can always just hover the mouse pointer over them for a second and you'll get a pop-up telling you what that function is. You also have the ability for the undo and the redo, which the RTF editor did not have unless you were in the advanced editor option. 
Along the right-hand side, we have the merge fields, just like we had previously. Same merge fields we were looking at before, except you have an additional section here for Rolodex carrier info that we did not have in the RTF editor. Just like before, we have the preview option and the type info here option as a merge field in the general category if we're going to want to have the ability to edit this letter at the time that we're sending it out. I'm going to go ahead and click preview and we'll just have that up at the top so we know we have that available. Just like in the RTF editor, you have the description of what this merge field does down at the bottom left. We also have the ability to switch from the editing mode to the HTML view. So if we want to see how this looks in HTML coding we have the ability to do so. Another feature that you'll have in the HTML editor that we did not have in the RTF editor is the ability to include images, to insert an image. I can click up here in the top right to insert an image and this will access the images that we have uploaded. If I need to upload a new image I can browse my computer to do so. I'm going to click upload new image in the top left here and indicate which agency we are uploading this image for. And I can then browse my computer to look for the image that I wish to include. So let's go ahead and use our QQ Solutions logo here. So we've uploaded this QQ Solutions logo, this JPEG image. I can zoom in and out on the image here. We can filter our images by the agency. I have the ability to preview the image, delete it, share or unshare the image or upload a new image. If we click on the share slash unshare option it will allow us to select some of our other agency office locations to share the images between. You also have the ability at the bottom here to include some hyperlink information. So if you want this image to double as a link to a specific website such as our company website we can go ahead and click edit here and we can enter in the URL web address. So I've now saved this QQ Solutions logo. It's uploaded to the agency and we have the qqsolutions.com website linked to this image. So if I go ahead and say insert image, the image is now included in my template. I can click on it if I need to control the size. I can stretch this image around and this image will now be a website link when I include it in an email. So if I use this template as an email, when they receive the email they'll be able to click on the image and connect to the website that I included in that URL. If we need to go back to this image to edit any of those features we can click again on the insert image option up at the top right. If I want to quickly edit the image properties or the link properties I can right click on the image and I have those options here on the menu. So the link properties would allow me to edit that website URL if necessary. So we have our logo here. Let's go ahead and resize this a bit. And let's go ahead and type up a letter template. Let's do another thank you letter or let's do a welcome letter on this one here. So again, we'll go to the client screen merge fields to get our client's name. So we can pull in our agency name. the line of business and our expiration, our effective and expiration dates. So we have our template typed up. We have an image that we're using, our agency logo here. We have some merge fields selected for client information, policy information, the agent from the client screen. If we're satisfied with our template, again, we can go ahead and save a copy of this here. Same options as before as far as language and the type, letter, fax cover letter, or email cover letter. Let's give this one a name. and we'll say OK. So again we can see the name of our template up in the top left so we know that this has been saved and we know which template we're working on. Before we leave this section here let me show you how we can convert an RTF letter into an HTML letter. So if you have some old letters in the RTF format and you want to have them accessible in this HTML editor we're going to click here 
and I'm going to select the RTF letter that I wish to bring forward. We had looked at this holiday letter previously. Let's look at that one again. And we'll say we want to open this as a letter. And the letter has been successfully converted. So all of the merge fields, all of the typed information has come over and it's now accessible in our HTML format. I can edit it or add images like I did previously if I want to go ahead and put my logo in here. And we'll select our QQ Solutions logo. And I'll resize this again. So let's go ahead and save this template. And just like that, we've converted our RTF letter to an HTML format, and we have saved it. We can go ahead and return back to the dashboard. Now, if we want to go ahead and send these letters out, either as a printed letter or an email or a fax to our clients, we can go ahead and view a client account directly. I can go to one of my recent clients, or I can search for a client in the top or I can go to my clients library over here on the left hand side. Let's just jump into one of our recent clients here. And when we're viewing a specific client, we can see their name here in the top left. Let's go over to the tab on the far right for letters. And here we can see any letters that we have printed previously for this customer. We have some toolbar options here for the letters. I can return back to the dashboard. We can print a letter. We can reprint one of the letters that you see here. So we can select a letter to be reprinted. We can delete a previously printed letter from this list, or we can refresh the list. If I do select a letter to reprint, I would just say reprint, and it's now printing a copy of that letter. And we can see a copy has then been added to the list of printed letters with the date and the timestamp. If I want to select a new letter to print, I'm going to click on the print option here in the toolbar and I'm going to select the letter that I wish to use. Notice that the .rtf or .html after the letter's name indicates if it's in the RTF or the HTML format. Let's pull up the letter that we had created previously. Here it is, our test template 123. This was an RTF letter that we had used. We'll say OK. And it's asking me which policy we want to associate the letter to. I'll just pick the active policy here at the top. And the system has gone ahead and generated our letter. And notice that it pulled in the client's name, where we previously had a merge field for client name. It pulled in the line of business, auto, for the policy type. It pulled in our agency name. It pulled in the agent that was on the customer, as well as the phone number for the agency, and the expiration date for the policy. If you see, it's allowing us to edit the information since I had included this type info here, merge field. As I mentioned, this will allow me to edit any portion of the letter, but the type info here does remain here so I can delete it and I know exactly where I wanted to type my information. If I had used the preview merge field, again, we would be able to edit any portion of the letter. We just wouldn't see the words preview like we saw the words type info here. At this point, I have the ability to either print, recall the last letter as it was and when it was initially generated, or we can go to the next type info here section if we have multiple type info here merge fields included. Let's select print. And we can see the letter now. I can choose to either print this page, or if we have multiple pages, we can select print all pages. Now, if I don't have the type info here or the preview merge field selected, rather than allowing me to edit the letter first, it would just bring me to this screen first. And I would have the option for printing or printing all pages. I'm going to type in a memo since I'm taking the action right now, printing this page. We can include a reminder date if necessary and additional information on the memo. I can click OK. And now it's giving us the option. We're selecting if we are either printing, emailing, or faxing this letter at this time. If I do select email, we can see the options for email change. We can see the email address for our customer has pre-filled. And the body of our letter is here. Again, if I need to, I can still make the changes. I can click Send Letter as Attachment. So if I want this to not be the body of the email, but if I want it to be included as an attachment to the email, and I can type in my own body message here, I can do so. And we can include the email signature. I can include additional attachments, such as additional letters that are saved under this client, 
images or forms that are saved under this client as well. If we select to fax this, we have our fax options listed here. And if I choose to print this, we have the number of copies, the printer that we're selecting, and again, I can select additional letters, images, or forms to include as printed items. Let's just go ahead with the letter that we have, and we'll say print. So a copy of that letter has now printed, and we can see the information here. It's now added to our list of previously printed letters. Again, I can click to reprint. Notice that it does not give me the option to edit if I select to reprint the existing letter. If I want to edit that again, since the editing option is saved to the template, I can select print again, and I can select the same letter that we are looking at. And again, it would give us the ability to edit this letter. I'm just going to cancel this here. Let's go ahead and select print, and let's select an HTML letter. I'll pick the one we had been using. And we'll apply it to the same policy. So this is our HTML letter, and again, it's giving us the ability to edit this letter before we send it out. Notice the editor is going to look a little differently since this is in an HTML format and not in the RTF format that we were just looking at previously. Again, I can make any changes that I want. On this one here, we had included the merge field preview up at the top. Notice that it does not show the merge field like it does for the type info here, but it does allow us to edit the letter anywhere we want and I can click print when I'm ready. It will let me know if there's any spelling errors. So I go ahead and say print email or fax and again we're presented with the options after we type in our memo. So let's go ahead and save this memo and we'll have the options do print, email, or fax again. This one here I'll say email and we'll just send it to a fake email address. I can put in the subject of my email here as well and include any carbon copy or blind carbon copy email addresses to send to. So the email has been sent and again a copy of that letter. Now on the list here is items that we've sent or printed. Notice this one will tell you it was sent via email. Let's go back to our dashboard and we'll take a look at the mail room next where we'll have the ability to send out these emails or printed letters in bulk fashion. So let's start by taking a look at our two different mail rooms. I'm going to go in first to the RTF letter mail room and then we'll take a look at the HTML letter mail room. The first thing that I want to point out in these two different mail rooms is that they are actually exactly the same. There are no difference in the buttons, in the filter options that you'll have. Really the only difference comes from the letter templates that you have the ability to select. So when we're in the RTF letter mail room, we only have the ability to select our RTF letter templates. We can see our filter options here. We'll go over all of these in just a moment. And if we go back to our dashboard and go into our HTML letter mail room, you'll notice the screens are exactly the same. Same filter options that you've seen previously. The only difference is in the letter templates that we have the ability to select. Here we can only select our HTML letter templates. Now back in the RTF letter mail room, I want to select the RTF letter that we had built previously. It was our test template and we're going to start narrowing down who we want to target with this bulk process. We have the option up above to use cross-selling if I check this box. We can use our cross-selling report to narrow down that we only want to target customers that have a specific policy with a specific line of business but do not have any policies with this other line of business. And we can select multiple of these here. I can specify the date type, whether we are searching by effective or expiration date, and we can then narrow down the dates here. And I can check this box if we want to include all active policies for a client within the given criteria above. We can narrow down the agency office that we have those clients assigned to. And if we need to show only one entry per client, we can check this box here as well. So for example, the way this is set up right now, we would be targeting all of our customers that have a homeowner's line of business with us, but do not have a flood policy with us within this date range that we've specified, so for the month of July. Aside from the cross-selling, we can narrow down just in general by the date type here. 
So we have a couple different date type options. We can also set the option of all clients. So regardless of date range, I want to pull all of my clients for this bulk process here. I'm going to set this back to an effective date range. Notice the other options that we have, expiration dates, cancellation dates, bill dates, birth dates, memo dates, intents to cancel, or even X dates. Let's put effective date and let's search for January to today. Now we have print email options here on the right hand side. By default we are selecting to either print this only to a printer. However, we have some other options here. If we want to email only if the email address is entered and there's no printer output, we can do so. If we want to email if there is an address entered, otherwise we would print to the printer. Or if we want to print to the printer and email if there is an email address entered. If we use any of these email options here, we will be able to check this box to email the letter as an attachment. So rather than the template being the body of our email message, it would be an attachment to that email. We can also indicate if we want to use the garage address rather than the mailing address whenever possible. Down below we'll have a queue for any letters that we have any letters or labels that we have decided to print in bulk that we have saved for printing at a later date and time. So when I go through the process of selecting all of my filters and I go to print these letters, I'll show you how we can save those letters into the queue if we need to, and then how we can retrieve them. We can narrow down further by our client status. So let's say we only want to target our active clients with active policies. We can sort by alphabetical or by date and we've already selected our template here. Let's take a look at our filters, the tab on the right. We can further filter by client source or by policy source, by whether this is new business, renewal, rewrite, or even a non-renewal, by any optional or additional coverages, finance companies, or whoever the agent is on the customer. We can further narrow down who we're targeting with this bulk process by the line of business, coverage, company, billing description or MGA. Now we can select one from the drop down menu. If we need to select multiple, we can click on the button here for line of business for example, and I would be able to select multiple lines of business to include in our filter. We have some additional options on the far right here to exclude things like endorsements or direct bill, finance payments due, or if we only want to print one letter, one label or letter per client for effective date, or per client in general. When I have my filter selected, I have my letter criteria selected, I can go ahead and say print letters. And based on the criteria, we can see there's 11 letters that are being generated. The system's going to load those up so I can look through them before we decide to print. So here we have the letters, and I can scroll through all of them in the bottom left. There was 11 total. If we want to go to the very beginning or to the very end, we can do so. Notice the template that we had used had our merge fields for things like our customer name and policy information. So we can scroll through our letters and make sure all of our merge fields are populated correctly. If any merge fields are blank, like here we don't have any address information pulling over, it's probably because that information is not entered in our system. We can always go back to the client or policy record and enter the information that's missing. Your merge fields will only be able to pull information that you actually have typed into the system. Note the template that we had used was one that had the type info here placeholder, which would allow us to edit this template before we send it out. Notice that when I am doing this in a bulk process, I do not have the ability to edit this, and that type info here is going to be there when I decide to print or email this letter. If I don't want to have that here, I would want to select a template that did not use the type info here, maybe a template that used the preview option instead, since the preview option would allow us to edit but wouldn't show up on the actual template. Regardless of whether we used preview or type info here, it's not allowing us to edit this before we send it out in bulk. I have the option up top to either print all of the pages, all 11 of the templates that we had generated, or I can print just an individual page, or I can click return. If I do hit return, the letters will not be printed and I can choose to save them later. This is essentially going to add them to that letter or label queue. So I can say yes to save all of these letters or I can say no to just discard them. I don't need to print them at a later time. Let's say yes. We're brought back to the mail room and we see we now have 11 letters in our queue here. If I need to access those at any time, we can use the options up top to print unprinted letters or print unprinted labels if we have any labels in our queue. Those options are going to bring us right back 
to where we were before where I can scroll through the different letters and I can decide if I want to print them all or print an individual letter here. Note if I do select to print a letter, let's say we want to print an individual letter template, we'll print this very last one, just print this page, we'll indicate our memo and the printer it's going to, and notice that we also had the option check to send an email, so it printed and sent an email, and the item is removed from the queue once the action is taken. So no longer will I have 11 items in my queue, I would have a total of 10 items in my queue. I now only have 10 letters left in my queue after having sent out the one. Again, I can go up top to click on the print unprinted letters if I want to go back to those other items that I have in my queue. If we want to take a look at the option for printing labels, we can click the radio button here. Notice all of our criteria here as far as the letter type, the client status and policy status, the date ranges, and the filter options are all the same as before. The only thing that changed for the labels is the actual information on the label. So I can see an example of how this label is going to look here on the right hand side and if I need to reorganize the information such as first name, last name, insured name, or the insured and the contact, we can see the example change as we do so. If we want to print instead of the address the insurance company, the policy number, phone number, or file number, we can do that as well. I can also indicate the date type to be printed, no date, the print date, or the print date and expiration date, and if we want to use just the garaging address when available, or if we have a DYMO printer that we would want to use, this would need to be set up beforehand, we have that option here. So again, I can say print labels once I'm satisfied with my search criteria and 11 labels were generated. Again, I can print, print with dialog, or I can return, and I can say that I want to keep these in the queue or to discard them. So I now have 10 letters and 11 labels in my queue. If I ever need to remove the items in my queue, I can just click on the unprinted letters or unprinted labels, and then I can say return without printing anything, and I can say no, I want to discard these. And you'll see my queue will set itself back to zero. So if we look at the HTML letter mail room, the process is exactly the same as we looked at in the RTF letter mail room. The only difference is in the letters that we can select. And let's go back to our dashboard. So that's basically going to wrap up everything that we wanted to show in the marketing class today. We went over the process of creating and editing templates, sending out letters and emails, as well as sending those out in bulk. If you have additional questions, you can refer to some of our other training videos that we have available for QQ Evolution, and you can always contact our support department for some additional assistance as well. Thank you all for your time.